Alexa, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I would like to share my screen. Is that OK? Please do. Yeah, you should have permission to do that. Go right ahead. All right, great. OK, um, so this uh, presentation is going to be about my recent work that I got to show at Access Gallery. Um, the title of the show was called Memory.Unshift. And it was a show that um, showcased work that was um, interdisciplinary around um, you know, digital media and, and new media art. And we kind of had this theme around memory. Um, so uh, just a little bit about myself. My name's Alexa Ann Bonomo. Um, I'm an interactive artist and designer, and I teach at the University of California Davis as a lecturer. Previously before that, I got my MFA at Davis, and so I just continued in um, as a lecturer, and I teach a couple of courses in um, graphic design and some of the coding classes uh, where it's called Coding for Designer, where we learn processing and the basics of programming and then in Java. And then um, the interactive media one, which is like web design where we learn HTML and CSS. Um, I also teach uh, a course through index space, which is really awesome. And that's like a six week course. Um, and it's been really fun so far. Um, so my design practice uh, is interdisciplinary processes within a uh, couple of spectrums between new media, computation, um, and some of my previous uh, thesis work uh, revolved around mental health and psychology. But um, what, I'm, what I'm gonna be talking about is this uh, installation work that I did at, uh, at uh, Access Gallery, which is mostly just revolving around memory and a more of a conceptual artistic installation. So um, my first, I have two works in this, in, in the show, um, and the first one's called Pulse of Anonymous Memories. Um, so the inspiration for this came from watching what has now become like my favorite animation film ever. It's called A World of Tomorrow. And it's kind of like this futuristic anthology series. I think there's like a couple now, um, but the there's um, a quote in it where the she says, I opened a gallery of anonymous memories and it's kind of like these projections of her lover who had passed away, memories, um, like kind of like clips of these like short images and animations and stuff. And I thought that was so cool because um, just the, I would definitely suggest to look at this film, but um, what it looked like were like these holograms, kind of like 2D holograms. And I was like, in this um, program at, gray area in um, San Francisco, gray area foundation for the arts and technology. And we were learning, like, this is where I was learning creative code for the first time. So I was like, oh, I think I can kind of like create this scene that I really liked. So this was like my first project that I got to show in San Francisco. Um, so this was like five years ago when I first made this up. And then for the show, I, um, I never got like good documentation. So um, I really wanted to do it again. And so I did an, like another spin on this with like different images, but the same kind of technology. So I called this Pulse of Anonymous Memories because it incorporates a pulse sensor to make the images uh, like animate to the beat of your heart. Um, okay, so here is the prototype. So what uh, I did was I got a piece of fabric and I project, used projection mapping to project an image onto the piece of fabric. And projection mapping is really cool because it will only project onto an area. And I'll show how I did this, like of the kind of like what I mean by this is that only the image will show um, in like a certain space. So you can kind of like customize where the image shows. You, you can put whatever kind of shape up, make something and um, project onto that like specific area. Oh, so the 
someone said, what was the film called again? It sounds really interesting. It's called A World, I'll type it in, A World of Tomorrow. And there's like three episodes now, I think. I think it like still goes, I think they're still making more. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's the prototype. I just wanted to get one working um, and it's hang hanging by fishing wire and it's a piece of fabric that's hanging by a wooden dowel. So with the projection map, it kind of looks like really similar to this hologram thing because if you get it really perfectly on the, on the fabric, it really just kind of looks like it's floating, which is really, really nice in a dark lit space. Um, hold on, I'm trying to get to the next slide. So a little bit about the imagery. Um, on my own time, I really love to do cyanotype printmaking, which is a process that's um, using the sun. Oh, is that a little ladybug up there? <laughs> Sorry to notice that. Um, so there's uh, the cyanotype paper, which is like this, uh, it's reactive to the sun. And if you put something on top of it to cover it and not expose it, it will stay, um, it will, it will not get exposed. And then the other, it'll kind of be like a negative. I'm like blanking out on which part becomes blue and white, but basically the one that's exposed will be either white. And then the other one will other, um, what's not exposed will, will actually stay blue. Yeah, so what's exposed will become blue. And then when you, whatever you don't explode, uh, expose will be white. So this is what it looks like. Oops. This is what it looks like um, in the process. And this is before you like put it in water. And then these are what happens after you place it, you uh, develop it in water. And so I became like really fascinated with learning about biblically accurate angels. I don't really know why it wasn't quite like a religious experience. It was just like the kind of reading about them like was very fascinating to me and it felt like really comforting kind of like reading about them and learning about um what they look like because they're like these very they're supposed to bring like safety but they're also really terrifying at the same time that they're, they're a little they're really like um we can't really comprehend how like how they look so I don't know, I just started to like paint these and that's what I wanted to use for this imagery because it was just like a special kind of thought to me and it was, it was uh, something that I was interested in at the time. So that was my subject that I was placing on these holograms, if you will. Um, and I thought that they really looked cool when they were animating afterwards. So these are like the first iterations. These are like hand paintings. And then as I was kind of like, Mm, I, I wanted to make them a little bit more detailed. So I went to digital painting because I, I, I'm a lot better at it. So I did these um, in Procreate. And so I scanned the cyanotype and then I painted this in Procreate and then I layered it on top. So these were the images that were on the, um, that became on, on the fabric. Um, and so just a little bit about the projection mapping process. Um, I used, um, an app called um, Mad Mapper. And so it allows you to uh, place images and then have like a scene where you can like make the shapes that will um, project onto a, a surface. So um, yeah, it allows you kind of like to move the corners of the image. Um, and this is like onto the actual fabric itself. So once I had that all kind of set up, um, I was able to go in deeper into code and start um, wiring up the pulse sensor um, and be able to create uh, what had become the final piece. So the final piece was six, six pieces on, of fabric hung up. Um, you can see on the screen kind of the interface of Mad Mapper. It has like um, two different kind of uh, areas to be able to manipulate things to make them work. 
Um, and yeah, this is just like a picture of me after hanging it and kind of cutting the fishing wire. And as you can see, it, it looks like they're pretty much floating at that point. Um, it was a little hard to get the, like the edges right. Um, at certain points, sometimes they would kind of like shoot further than the actual fabric and start uh, projecting onto the wall. So sometimes it would kind of like adjust and kind of start making these lines. So that was like one of the downsides of, of that. I couldn't like get it quite perfect just because the fabric isn't like completely flat. So as you can see, yeah, you can kind of see the edges a little bit on the, on the walls. But um, I, nonetheless, I think it looked pretty cool. Um, and then, oh, I think, is this a video? I know I have a video of it, of the pull. So this is the, what the surface looked like. You, you put your finger down and um, there's a little pulse sensor. And I used the, like, I made some fabric cyanotypes with the same pattern. And then I also placed the actual um, fabric on top of, on top of it. And this is like a family heirloom that was given and passed down to me. So just kind of like going with the theme of past memory. This is made by um, my like great aunt. So, yeah. Um, so this is what it looks like beating to, in real time to my heartbeat. I'll play it again. So if you put your finger down, it will, it will sense your heartbeat and start to pulse at the same time. Um, so it's really eerie and uh, yeah, it just kind of like feels like you're really connecting with the work, um, a little bit more immersed into it than uh, just looking at it with your eyes. And so yeah, that's the final final piece for this one. Um, yeah, Let's see, I'm just looking at the chat. Oh, we should have painted the wall. Absolutely, like, yeah, I think it would still project onto it though. <laughs> yeah, there's that absolute so, black paint. Have you guys seen that? The the paint that's like so black it absorbs oh. all the light. It absorbs all, yeah, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm kind of joking <laughs> because if we had painted the wall that black, like we would have had to paint it white afterwards and that would have been hell. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how that would work. Um, yeah, the, um, yeah, in theory, that would have been really cool for sure. Probably really expensive to get though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the Vanta Black, Linda has it listed there, that Vanta Black. I had a tube of that at one point, it is really black really oh my gosh so yeah um so that was that um um it was really cool to kind of go to um do something over like after i've done it five like i did it five years ago for the first time and kind of like do it with the experience that i have now so it was just an ex a cool experience to like do it twice but with like a a long like a set of experiences behind my back the second time. So um, I, I did I did a completely redo of the actual software. Um, I, I did this in like 3JS or something with like shaders and stuff that I think I was getting like a lot, like I had like an understanding of like five years ago, but then also when you're using like, um, and you know, like node packages, which is, I don't know if they, when they're like, five years ago and you try to update it, everything kind of becomes jumbled. So I, I, at the very last minute, I like figured out how to do this in processing and it was like way easier. And I was spending so much time trying to like fix the code from five years ago when there's like all this new technology that you can do. You can like hook up a sensor and use the, what's coming into the serial monitor. And there's like an app now that you can do um, like siphon it into P5JS. So I found that and I was able to like plug it in as a variable um, to like offset the heartbeat. And so that was really cool that I could, I figured that out. Otherwise it wouldn't have worked at all. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's, that's the first one. And now I'm gonna talk about um, this thing I titled the handmade data set. And this idea came about and um, in this kind of state of mind where I was really trying to like hold on to a memory or like something that I was experiencing in the moment, I really wanted to hold on to that 
memory and like take everything in and be really present in it so that I could to the best of my ability like remember it well and go back into my memory because I didn't want to forget it like I I don't know, which led me, I was taking this class called Digital Love Languages through School of Poetic Computation. They're based in New York and I was taking this like 10 week course. And so this idea that I had um, for this kind of prompt that was given was like a handmade data set. Like if you can actually create a memory through data sets and create it with another person. So to to collect data with a lover and create some kind of like encapsulation of a memory. And so it was very speculative and I was wondering about this, but um, it kind of, it just kind of bloomed into this interactive um, screen-based uh, web, uh, I guess web-based work um, called Handmade Dataset. So you can actually, so wait, wait a second, um, I will post this, but what I'm gonna do is like kind of um, simulate what was at the gallery, if I can. Of course, it's not going to load, huh? Let me see. Um, hold on, let me change. So this was done using um, P5.js and HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, and so the idea is that um, anybody who's on this website will see what's interacted in real, real time. So, uh, and then the big um, achievement that I, I, I had been able to do is um, be able to print to my printer. Um, so if you so if you visit the site, you can you can print to my printer, which it should work still. I don't see why not. So if you do visit this, I can put it in the chat. I'm pretty sure is um, you know if you start making shapes by clicking on the screen, it should show up on yeah. So someone else made something, it starts to show up on the screen. And so um, it's meant for two people, like the idea, but actually you can, at this stage, you can just, everybody can go on it. So you can say, I am happy in the, um, oops, that was like in the wrong text message. So if I put, I am happy here, then it will show up and it should show up on your screen. Oh, okay, so someone else clicked print. <laughs> um, so, so someone can print. I'm not going to print, but it's a good thing that you actually see that um, since I'm not in Firefox right now, this works in Firefox where it will just automatically bypass the print dialog box and will just print to my printer. So that was what was happening in the gallery. But as you can, it's actually better for this. You can see the dialog comes up and you could, I could print this. Um, and it can start printing, printing our, what our uh, output. Oh my gosh, so many people are <laughs> printing stuff. Um, yeah. So what happened in the gallery is as people would start to um, That's you know, so awesome. create these, um, they could print from anywhere. So I was actually in Europe. So if it was on, which it was most of the time, I could like print stuff and it would just print in America if I was like all the way in Europe. So it was really crazy that I was able to do this um, because I just didn't think that it would, I, when I started making it, I, didn't, I was like really unsure if I would be able to make it work. But um, yeah, so actually in the gallery, so um, I'm gonna cancel out of that. In the gallery, um, so yeah, this is just an example of like a output that people after like people would um, interact with it and fill stuff out. And um, it's cool if you were like long distance with someone and you can like send messages to each other. Um, so if someone were to print it out, it would just start to print out a piece of paper in the gallery 
and then like spit out onto the floor, <laughs> which I thought was really, I don't know, just the like kind of like bleh onto the floor was kind of a cool, cool effect. <laughs> so yeah, over time, um, it was like over time, um, the printer printed out like just a huge pile of pages over a course of a month, which was really fun. So yeah. Um, uh, a little bit more about the like conceptual idea. I had this, so my idea was I, this noticing this habit that I had of like carefully trying to like take in sensory information. And I was like really wanting to like create a method of like encapsulating a memory. And I think that in doing this kind of process, it was this ironic, like it, it was almost kind of like an unromantic kind of outcome that I uh, was trying to collect like memories as data and, and it became this realization um, that in making this piece, there was like a very anticlimactic like realism, realization that the, it's unattainable. The goal of repeatability of a memory is it's, you will never like reconstruct such a special moment again. So just in doing this process was kind of like basically proving that because no matter what, like even if you print something out on a piece of paper or you do some kind of thing, it was like never the same. So it was just like this kind of active, like weird, um, mm, like meditation on this idea that like, no matter what kind of like data that we take in, it's really never gonna be the same as like experiencing something like in real life as a person, as a human. So yeah, the, it, it wasn't meant to like solve this problem. It was kind of just like to show that it's really not, it will never be the same. But um, yeah, this, this is like a really fun, it was like a really simple idea. It just became this kind of really cool um, installation. And yeah, the printing from wherever was really fun. So yeah, that was this piece. Um, Having the paper come out on the floor like that, it just it had this very visceral kind of immediacy that was so satisfying <laughs> given everything else was being so, elect so electronic. And just the fact that you were able to bypass like all the security settings in the world <laughs> so that people could just yeah. print whatever on your <laughs> printer from anywhere is just, is is both kind of funny, but awesome at the same time. Yeah. Um, so the technology behind it was using socket IO. I have the code up in front of me, the two libraries. If you could show the code, that would be awesome. Yeah. How about I do Visual Studio code? Yeah. So yeah, I had um, Express. Wait, it says the packages right in here. Express and Socket IO. Um, so what it allows you to do is basically send messages and receive them from other computers. So it kind of like you do Command Plus on your keyboard. Yeah. Is oh, that yeah, better? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So basically when it when someone is on the page, it creates a new connection and it gives you an ID and you're able to like send messages or to each other like through interaction. So like pressing a button or something. Um, so this function, there's a function here. Where does it say there should be one that's like print? Yeah, like so on print, it will it will basically run the print function, which I believe is on emit print. Yeah, I see it there with a with a uh, anonymous function in here. Yeah, and then there's a there's a server, and then there's the what the um, sketch socket emit. Ooh, it was just there. just the like function that's supposed to just say print on your computer um that it when you press the button and you say print usually it what would happen is the dialog box would show up um but 
simply what you could do is on Mozilla Firefox, I don't, I haven't figured out a way to do this on Chrome, but Mozilla Firefox has like a way for you to like configure its settings to not, it's just like to bypass the print settings. So you just kind of like in the address bar, go to the settings and you just click it off. And so if something is printing, it just like won't show the dialog box. So there's not actually any other like specific code that I did in this that was like bypassing. It was just the settings in Google or in Mozilla Firefox. Mm -hmm. um, but the the um, the kind of harder code was to get it to like send that message to to the right computer, <laughs> which was figuring out that like the first one to open the page is like computer zero, which would hold the printer, which was the one that was in the gallery. And um, to basically define that was a little tricky. Um, and then have everybody else be able to like send messages to that specific ID. Um, that was kind of what the, this code, what this code does. And you know, it took a little bit of time and it took a lot of reading the library and everything, but um, I was able to figure it out. <laughs> And it's, it worked in the gallery, which was nice. So, yeah. Um, that was a super cool piece. I, I think that you. was my favorite one, actually. Yeah, I honestly think it was really fun. Um, so yeah, that's that was the piece. Um, that's pretty much uh, all I have for today. And um, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, Alexa, is the code that you just showed on uh, GitHub, maybe, so other people can check it out? It is, actually, um, but it, you know, I should put it into its separate, like, actual repository just on its own, because it's in the, it's in, like, my website. Gotcha, so, okay. Yeah. Whenever um, you do that, please shoot a link to, um, to the code to either me or Bill, and we can include it in yeah, the video description for you. Totally. I can definitely do that. Um, yeah, it, it was really cool. Thank you. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. How long did yeah. it take to develop the last project? Um, well, in total, I think it took me about like two weeks over time. Like not, not like in total, like working two weeks at a time, but like I, I did the first like cup, like page of it where it was just like a form filling out and then I found this um javascript that would like turn it into a json file so I had this like idea that you'd like collect these like json files with someone else and it was like your memories collected over time which I thought was fun um I mean like I'm just like a weird data nerd so I was like oh that'd be cool to have like these json files with memories with my loved one and whatever so then it became so it was just that that was the app itself and then, um, then I was like, well, no, I wanted to like print out something like that'd be so cool. And so that took more time. That was like probably a week of time um, when I had the time to do work on it. And it took, it was long times at the computer for sure. Like long, late nights. <laughs> um, Alexa was texting me like the month before and I'm like, Bill, do you know how to do blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, I have no freaking idea. <laughs> I'm really glad I don't have to solve that problem. It but I was a lot impressed that than... you figured it out. Like you got everything that you wanted to to work and more. Yeah. Really, we met on Zoom and it was kind of close to the to the date. Yeah. we were both like we're having problems, <laughs> and we both we both figured it out. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was honestly really surprised. There was a time where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but <laughs> I did it so. And it was easier than our solution that we thought. Like we thought that we'd have to create like this bot to like click on things somehow, mm -hmm. but it, it really, it was a lot easier than that. But it That's took amazing. a while to figure out that it was easier than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It was very you, cool. You and Bill are both um, really good at coming up with really artistic things to do with code and building these uh, these apps that I would never think of in a million years to do. Like, oh, I thought I would just take, you know, like Bill's done several other things too, where he just built an app. Like, oh, I thought I'd take this thing that would like, you know, manipulate squares in different ways. And then I'd add to be squares and triangles and then squares and triangles and circles. And he'll just build like, these um, really interesting animation demos in JavaScript that do things I would never would think of. And your, your talk today kind of reminded me of some of the stuff that I've seen from Bill before too. It's like, I wish my brain worked the way 
your two brains work and came up with um, really neat project ideas like this. That was cool. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, that is, that is really cool. Thanks, thanks, Nolan. Um, I think, you know, Alexa, you kind of inspired me with your printer idea because I've been sort of geeking out on how to make things in my house that are not necessarily smart things actually smart things. And I don't know if anybody else has gotten into this. It's like extremely nerdy, but like I have a ceiling fan that has just like a simple RF remote. And I found this device online that you can buy called the Bond that you can sort of train to speak to it, but you plug that device into your Wi-Fi. So now I can like, and then I have home uh, home bridge running on a on a Mac mini. So I, I trained Homebridge to talk to the device that talks to the fan so that I can tell Siri to turn the fan on and off. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely meant, I know someone who was working on um, making uh, their, like a retractable cur curtain. Oh like, yeah, the, the curtains. Yeah, the Bond things work with the curtains as well. Yeah, like they will, the blinds will like kind of like go up and down. They'll I don't know if they ever got down. it working, but they were figuring it out. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. that, that Bond device will, will handle those as well. And, yeah. um, and then like I wanted, I really wanted to make it work with my, um, my air conditioner, which is a, a mini split. A, a mini split system and it has not even an uh an rf remote it has an ir remote which it, which are the ones where you where you have to be in line of the remote has to be in line of sight of the actual ac unit in order for it to work um with the rf that's just radio frequency so, so as long as you're on the right frequency you can do it even if you're not like in line of sight. But with the air conditioner, you have to be in line of sight. So I found another device called a flare puck that, what, that you set up so that it can see, so that it's visually like across the room from the, um, from the uh, air conditioning unit. And then that thing's on the internet. And this afternoon, uh, when I left uh, class at, at UC Davis, I actually turned on my AC on my phone and it was on when I came home. That's so cool. That's yeah. really nice for living in. <laughs> yeah. Extremely, um, uh, <laughs> extremely nerdy stuff, but you know, I don't know if anybody else appreciates those things. Uh, Kendall asks, what was the finger pulse sensor again? Um, I, it's, it's a, I got it off of Adafruit and I think you can also get it off Amazon. I don't remember, wait, I think I might have the like brand if that's what you might be asking. Um, I have an extra one. It's, it's called PulseSensor.com is the one that I got. Um, there, I had like an extra one because I, I thought I broke my, the one that I had originally, <laughs> but I was able to fix it with some soldering. Um, but yeah, it's just like this kind of little, little here I can show. On these wires, there's this, this little thing. And um, yeah, you just put your finger on it. It's really sensitive. It's kind of, it's more of like a cheaper, cheaper one, but yeah, it just measures your heart rate or your, it's just your pulse. And then that plugged into USB on the computer? Yeah, well, it was connected to the Arduino Uno, which connects oh. through USB. Yeah, so okay. the Arduino Uno is like you do the wiring and everything. Um, and so you, you can, you don't need to solder or anything. Um, I just needed to solder to make the, to make the wire longer. So I just like soldered wires together, but like if on its own, you don't need to do any of that. You can just plug it in the, the way you need to into an Arduino Uno and then run the code and it should work. So, yeah. Uh, Alexa, somebody earlier in the chat asked what the name of the film was called. I don't know if we answered that one or not already. I did. I put a link to to the. Um, oh, you did. Cool. To the page. Yeah. Oh, I see it now. Thank you. A world of tomorrow. Yeah. Don Hertzfeld. Um. He. I don't know if anybody is familiar with like a very viral video that got popular on YouTube, where it's like my spoon is too big, and it's like these, these um, like stick figures. So he became like really popular 
over these like YouTube videos, but then he became, then he made this film, which was like a lot more serious, but they're still the same style of like stick figure other characters. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it was really good. I honestly need to rewatch the third episode because it blew my mind of like how complicated the world was, like these concepts of um, just being able to like clone your memories and like live out a longer lifespan through different bodies and stuff and then became like these clones of each other. It was so weird. I was like, who's who again? So yeah, it was, it's really interesting kind of idea. And it, it was a very special animation for me. The first one is my favorite, but yeah. So I think as far as like coming up with these ideas, um, I think I, I really am drawn to like sensors and kind of like using the sensor to visualize something that could connect with me somehow or um, with the environment that I'm in. And I don't know, like, that translation or like that mapping, I think becomes the piece and will develop from there. And I think that's kind of how I kind of think about my works when I'm coming up with ideas. I love that process that sort of the being inspired by things and how that leads to other things. I think that that's like a really fun way to work. Yeah, I mean, visualization is kind of exactly that it's like you're equating like a you have one piece of information but you're like translating it into this analogous idea to represent that um and I think data for me really added more sense like one I, I think a lot of people in the arts are very you know expressive but at certain times it was very difficult for me to be just okay with that where I needed that like logic of like expressing information that was like recorded and somehow to like create that logical sense of something rather than just being like abstract. So that's why data as like a medium, like a creative medium is like really satisfying to me because it's it makes more sense in, in my head. But I would say that my work still is like becomes very out of abstract it's not like your conventional data visualizations obviously <laughs> any other questions for alexa before we turn off the video good all right i'm going to stop the recording there then alexa thank you so much that was fantastic thank you